In this clip, I want to talk about composition. So composition is, you know, essentially where you choose to put the camera and what you choose to be in that frame. So this is about the choice of shots. So you've got to think about what the shot um, really says and what it adds to your film. How does it drive the narrative forward? Uh, the composition of a shot, so the choice of framing and the significance within this. And also the sequence of shots, so placing the chosen compositions together. So, you know, this last point, you might think about this is to do with editing, but, you know, think about the composition, how these compositions will will cut together and flow um, to drive your narrative forward and make sense of the film. So in previous weeks, we looked at 180 degree rule and the 30 degree rule in terms of continuity. You know, in terms of placing your shots and choosing your shots, you need to figure out Will there be continuity there or will it be will we cut together as jump shots? You know, what will these shots mean? What's the significance in these shots? The key really is about driving the narrative forward. Think about the narrative of your film and how your compositions will move this narrative forward. You know, there's you might have surplus shots in there or surplus compositions. You know, you need to be shooting to make sure you're getting as much information out of the film as possible. You know, again. You're writing the film with your camera. Your camera is the pen. Think about how this pen will, will move this narrative and push this forward. So, first of all, we need to think about shot arrangement. So, the arrangements of shots, we need to think about what position we're looking at the shot from. So, think about this as a witness point of view. You know, your camera is witness to a subject. So, you know, whose position are we looking at this scene from? You know, what kind of story does the camera tell us? You know, a long shot might be very different than a close-up in terms of a witness position. Okay, so a long shot might be like you're you know, viewing someone from a distance and maybe watching them when you shouldn't be. And a close-up shot means, you know, we're there in the room, it's much closer, it's more intense, the emotions are deeper. Okay, think about the comprehension of your shot as well. Does it make sense? You know, is the camera in the right place to you know, narrate the type of story you're trying to tell. You know, do we see all the characters of the characters in the right positions? Is the shot in the right position? Is the angle in the right position? You know, think about your story and think about the needs of the shot. You know, how do these things all work together? Think about in terms of a plot also. So does this shot work in terms of a plot, in terms of the story that you're trying to tell? Also think about in terms of economy. You know, economy when I, when I mean this is about not getting too many shots. So using one shot instead of five. So if someone was to walk in and out of a building, you know, rather than have them walking out of an office, closing the door, walking down the stairs, walking out the front door and out the building, you know, it'd be very simple sim to cut a lot of those shots out, have them leaving an office very quickly and then leaving the um, front door. You know, in terms of economy, we can drive a narrative forward much better and much faster and much more economically in terms of cutting out these shots. Again, people will make up their own opinions and perceptions about these. When we're so familiar with film, we're able to place these scenarios together. And then lastly, think about the drama. Think, do you, does this shot give your film drama? Does it give it pace? You know, that's the main thing. Think about how is the shot dramatic? What emotion does the shot hold? You know, how is this done through the composition? You know, your placement of the camera, placement of the subjects, placement of the lens, you know, the movement of the shot. You know, and then finally, when it comes to the editing, how these compositions are going to be placed together. Again, the main thing here is narrative drive. We're striving all the time to get that narrative drive, to push the narrative forward. Okay, and so if we think about this in terms of motivation as well, Think about your shots and your choice of shots. You know, why do you change shots at any point? So why does the shot change? So what is um, what need is there for change? You know, think about is this a natural place to change shots? Is it a natural place to move the camera or to zoom in or to you know change the shot size or the or even move the subjects around in the shot? You know, how does the shot change as well? You know, is it a dramatic change? You know, does the background change? Do the the people in the shots change? Um, does the lighting change? You know, how significant is that move and that change in composition? 
and what does it say about your story. Also, how do we anticipate um, a cut? So how do we anticipate shot change? Is it something natural or does it does it throw the audience out of balance a little bit? Does it go against the grain? Again, think about the way you're telling your story and the, story, the type of story you want to tell. Okay, then also think about the motivation and the motivation really should follow the story. In terms of all the motivations for your shot, you know, as a director, you need to decide what the motivation for your story is and what, what makes the story flow. So in terms of this, think about the narrative flow. Also think about the information that we need to know and also the, the, the amount of in, the sort of emotional involvement in the film and the information we get through this emotional involvement. You know, the camera can add a lot of emotional involvement by, you know, if two characters are arguing, do we cut back between the arguments or do we stay on one character? You know, this shot would be completely different than that balanced shot where we cut between two characters. So it changes our subject position to the characters and obviously our emotional affection and emotional bond to those characters. Okay then, also think about who are you directing? So the choice and ordering of a shot. So think about the editing, but also think about directing the audience. You know, if we work in the theatre, we've got an open stage and what we work with is the strength of performance and the strength of dialogue to automatically move the audience around. So, you know, through performance, we're guiding the audience to look in a certain position or a certain way. As a director with a camera, you can guide the audience to look at certain places. So whether this is through shot movement, whether it's through depth of field, whether it's through lighting and using certain lighting designs to pick out different subjects, um, whether it's the use of focus, or whether it's the use of performance in the shot, you know, the subject positions in the shot, or, you know, the, the lens length, or even special effects. You know, in terms of your composition, think again about, you know, what the camera sees, what, what position the camera's taking, and also how you're going to direct your audience to see this. Okay, think about the lines of sight then in your composition. So this is very important. You know, one of the first rules is the rules of third. So if we break any shot down into a grid, we might naturally think that subject positions will be in the center of shot, but in actual fact, it's down the size of the shot. So if we were to look at this shot, you know, I'm on one of the lines there and another there, you know, and the lines will go across the top and bottom as well. There's a clip that follows on from this one that I want you to see which talks about the rules of third and the composition in more detail. Um, going back to what I was saying, in terms of you know, the lines of sight, you need to think about the detail in the lines, um, the emotion in the lines, the points of view, comprehension and continuity. So lines of sight will be you know, lines made, whether vertical, um, horizontal or diagonal lines in your frame, or, you know, eye lines where people are looking at each other or looking at a certain subject, you know, as an audience, we're directed through these lines. So we will naturally follow lines and, and like different lines say think different things. So horizontal and vertical lines um, and the way the camera's shot in terms of those lines or what line or what axes it falls on will also say something very different. Again, if you watch the, the following resources and clips, this will explain this more clearly. Okay, then think about the justification of choices. So in your shot and your composition, first to think about what you're trying to achieve, you know, what is what what you're trying to say through this shot in terms of the way you're telling the story. Think about the aesthetic qualities of a shot also. Is it an interesting shot to look at? So does it convey the story? But you know, overall, is it a nice shot? Is it well balanced? Is it well lit? Um, does it adequately do what you want it to do? You know, don't you don't want a flat shot and you don't want a shot where, you know, there's a lack of light. You know, you, you still need, even though we're talking about driving the narrative forward, you still need a nice shot that's got uh, like good aesthetic qualities to it. Think about your reasons for constructing this, even the aesthetics. You know, what do the aesthetics give to your story? Again, think about the comprehension. 
does it all make sense? And then finally think about the continuity. Will it cut together? You know, will it make sense in terms of a story and plot? Also, um, think about time and money. We've talked about economy so far, but we can talk about economy shots, but also the fact that they might be more economical. You know, it costs a lot less to shoot 10 shots than it does for 50 shots, but you might be able to cut out 40 shots in, in terms of what you do. So this is a lot less setups, a lot less locations, you know, less time on set, um, less resources, less need for actors. So think about how you can adequ adequately tell your story with less shots. So don't think about that you go in and you shoot all master shots, which master shots are just simply shots that cover all the scene because if there's one mistake in a master shot, you have to start from the top again. Whereas when you start to cut into shots with medium shots and close-ups, it means we can take it all one, one line at a time. So think about the economy of your shot. TV drama is a great example. You know, TV drama on a budget, you know, rather than simply choosing the shots to drive a narrative forward all the time, they might choose shots which are more economical to shoot in terms of, you know, less shots, but still being able to tell the story and let the narrative flow. Okay, think about engagement. So, um, simple stories have emotional engagement. You know, complex stories and complex shots, you know, can often be confusing. You want your audience to understand your story, understand the flow of the story. So make sure, you know, you stick to simple shots. Again, you don't have to oversimplify your shots, but make sure it's the right shot for the scene. Again, there might be times when you need a complex shot, but think about what type of film you're making, what you can afford, you know, realistically, what you can you do. And also think about the genre of your film. You know, if it's an action film, then go for complex shots. You know, for those action sequences. But if it's a love story, you know, stick to simple shots and try and let the performances speak for themselves. Think about the choice of style as well. You know, do you um, write your own style on this film in terms of these shots? Um, you know, if, have you got a certain style? Um, is there a certain way you shoot? Think about it in terms of the suitability to story and theme. And also, what does the script and the subject require? So, how should the story be told? What should it convey? And how can this be achieved through style? So, you know, as a director or as a camera operator, make sure you're aware of story and you're familiar with the script. You know, think about what the story tells you. This will tell you certain, like, certain things about style, and the way it will be shot and the way the story will be composed. 